Hi guys, my name's Shane Whitlock. This is a video showing one of the bandsaws I restored. Um, I picked this up last summer locally, paid the guy a hundred bucks for it. Uh, the machine had been sitting outside for, I don't know, many years, exposed to the elements. Rusting away, uh, lots of rust on it, paint was flaking off. So I brought her home, stripped her down to bare metal, repainted it, stripped all the rust, polished all the hardware, and wired it up to a three-phase, five-horsepower motor. Some of the specs on the saw. The main table here is 36 and a half inches by 30 and a half. Then the smaller auxiliary table, 15 and a half by 19 and a quarter. Overall height of the machines, just under 97 inches. We've got 36 inch wheels, top and bottom, both two inches thick. See the upper wheels spoked. And then the bottom wheels, solid cast iron. The wheel itself weighs well, well over 200 pounds. It takes a lot of power to get it up and spinning. Then it takes quite a while to slow it down too. Blade length takes a 223 and a half inch blade. Um, I can resaw up to 18 inch thick boards. The weight of the saw I've got it listed around 2,900 pounds. It might be just a little bit lighter, but it's it's well over a ton. It's flat belt driven. It's a 14 inch pulley. You can see the large bearing block in there for the lower. It's all Babbitt bearing, upper and lower. The saw was made, I'm not real sure, just an educated guess, I'd say late 1800s, early 1900s. This hand wheel here will tilt the table. The table will tilt forward up to a little over 45 degrees. Found a nice light for it, picked that up off of eBay. It looks real similar to the Delta retirement lights. It's got the same hardware and everything, but it's quite a bit bigger, at least you know twice as big as a, the Delta retirement lights. It fits nicely on the saw. Hand well here is for raising and lowering the guide post. It's attached to a pulley cable here. And then the counterbalance weight back there assists in raising and lowering this post. It's you know almost two inches thick, solid still. So it's real heavy. Got right blade guides on the top and the bottom. The upper one come with the machine, the lower one I added. I don't know if there was ever you know, guides on the lower or not, you can see this kind of a T-slotted T -slated casting here. So I don't know if there was another set of guides right there or, or what. I mean, it seems kind of low, so I'm not sure. But I had to mount this one, made my own hardware to get it mounted up in there. Got this hand wheel here that raises and lowers the upper wheel, gives the tension on the blade. Then adjust the tracking. We've got this brass lever here, tilts the wheel so you can track the blade. Let's start stop station here. It's wired up to a mag starter back on the back side here. See the tilt scale, it's all solid brass. 
and the locking handle to lock the table in place to keep it from moving. The upper bearing block there. Got a five horsepower, three phase uh, Westinghouse motor on it. And I built a mobile base for it so I can move it around the shop if I need to. And where I get her where, where I want it, I can tighten up the jack screws here. And that lifts the whole machine up and takes the weight off of the wheels. Seems to work pretty good. Also added this brush to it, keep the sawdust off the lower wheel. Blade guard there. Another blade guard here on the front. That one wasn't on there. I added that. I didn't like having, you know, 18 inches of exposed blade staring me in the face when I was cutting wood. Get a shot of the badge. You can see Enterprise Manufacturing Company. Um, you'll notice there's no number stamp for the serial number or model number, which is kind of strange. Um, Enterprise Manufacturing Company, they're known for making sawmills, but there's no record of them ever making bandsaws. They were later bought out by Rockwell and then merged with uh, Crescent Machinery Company. They made bandsaws, but this one looks nothing like those. Um, I've looked all over the internet and haven't been able to find another one similar to this one. So as far as I know, it's one of a kind. I don't know if it was a prototype and, you know, if Enterprise was going to start making bandsaws or what. The fence I also added. Um, it come off my Oliver table saw over there. I wanted to be able to have a fence that adjusted for the, you know, blade drift. So the fence is just bolted to the underside of the table. The one bracket here I've got slotted. So I can, you know, slide the table to adjust for the blade drift. I also wanted a micro adjust on it for resawn. So I added this bracket here and the nut here that clamps onto a rod. The other end's threaded with that uh, 12 teeth per inch. So if you turn this three times, it'll move the fence a quarter of an inch. I don't know if you can see it moving or not. Anyway, it works real well. See a couple neural knobs on the top here. Um, what those are for is I've got an auxiliary fence here on the wall that'll slide over the fence and you just tighten her down. This big side, flat side here is for resawing. Then if I, you know, cut in thinner boards I can flip her around and use the other edge. Nice big old heavy duty saw. And that little Delta 10 inch saw looks like a toy compared to this monster. It's got some line shafts here on the floor. Eventually I'm going to get those mounted up in the ceiling and use that to power this saw in a, a tanning machine that I've got. So let me go ahead and put the camera down. I'll turn her on, make a quick cut. Hopefully the camera won't fall. I'll turn on the phase converter and shut this door. Hopefully you can 
still hear me? my website at shanewhitlock.com I've got before, during, and after restoration photos there this machine and a lot of the other machines that I've restored I hope you enjoyed the video, thanks for watching <laughs>